the OpenSSL tool in Kali Linux can help us understanding symmetric encryption. To start with, we need some information to encrypt. To do this, we can use a text editor, such as Nano, to place information into a file. And we can go ahead and check the contents of the file with hexdump. If we look at the actual file that was saved, we see that there's an extra character on the end of the word hello. This is because text editors generally install the character turn line feed at the end. It may appear strange that the 0a is not in the last position. It actually is. This computer is using the little Indian format to represent the text. So to read this, we need to read these blocks from right to left. 48 is capital H, 65, little e, then we have L, L, O, line feed. We'll notice that the echo command does the same thing. If we output information into file.txt with echo, the line feed is also there. So we need to decide whether we want the line feed to be present or whether we want the file to just contain the characters to encrypt. The reason this becomes important is in case you're trying to replicate results. So if you're just trying to encrypt information for the sake of encryption, this probably doesn't matter. But if you're trying to do a homework assignment or replicate someone else's results exactly because you're doing a lab or you're trying to learn based on some example, it's important to be precise about what characters go into the file since they'll make a big difference on the output later. To suppress the line feed using the echo command, you can add the dash in switch. And this will prevent the line feed from automatically being tacked on to the end. So now we just have H-E-L-L-O and no extra characters in the file. So now we can start to use OpenSSL to encrypt this file. The OpenSSL has several ciphers that can be used with symmetric encryption. One of those is the AES cipher, and it comes in 128-bit key length, 256-bit key length, and 192-bit key length. Also, OpenSSL implements CBC, or Cipher Block Chaining Mode, or ECB, Electronic Codebook Mode. We're going to choose the AES-256 in CBC mode. To get started, we need to specify the cipher that we're going to use for the symmetric encryption. And then we're going to use the dash E option, which indicates that we want to encrypt. Dash D would be decrypt. Dash A means that we want the output, in other words, the encrypted text, to be base64 encoded after the encryption. The characters that are output when symmetric encryption is used can be any ASCII character, and many of those characters don't display well on the screen. By base64 encoding, you can ensure that the characters will be readable. We're also going to go ahead and use assault. When using assault, it's proper to use it this way with dash salt. This will cause OpenSSL to generate a random salt. The random salt is not meant to be secret, but it does provide uniqueness before encryption. The salt is mixed with the plain text that's going to be encrypted. So if two people encrypt the same text with the same password, the unique salts ensure that the resulting ciphertext will be different, even though the two people in our example you encrypted the same information with the same password. Normally you don't specify your salt, but in this case we're going to go ahead and specify it just to make sure that we can repeat these results. If the salt were random, as it should be, then we would get different results every time. So we're just going to make up a salt. We're specifying it in hex format. 
the input file that we're going to take in is going to be file.txt. And then we need to also provide an output file name unless we're going to redirect this output. In our case, we're just going to save the output to a file. So we'll call it file.txt.aes. The name is not important. We need to give a password and we'll be asked to enter it twice. In this case, we're just going to use the password of password, all lowercase. So now we can see we have file.txt, file.txt.aes. So we can see the original hello with no carriage return line feed, and then the resulting ciphertext, base64 encoded for the word hello after encrypting it with the word password and this salt. To do the decryption, we simply reverse the process, which makes sense because this is symmetric encryption. So the exact same password that did the encryption also does the decryption. To decrypt, we need to change the dash E to a dash D for decrypt. We leave dash A to tell OpenSSL that we're going to be inputting a 64 encoded ciphertext. And this time, the ciphertext will be the input rather than the output. We need to be careful to leave the salt the same. And for the input file, it'll be file.txt.aes. For the output file, to avoid overwriting the original file, we'll go ahead and give it a .dec extension for decryption. This name is not important, it just makes the file different than the original file.txt. We have to enter the password, that's password all lowercase. And now we have three files. The original file, the encrypted file, and then the decrypted file. If everything worked correctly, the original file and the decrypted file should match. So if we look at file.txt, we call that txt.decrypt. They appear to be the same. And then we can look at the hex to ensure that that's the case. You can also run the diff command on the two files to verify that they're the same or compare the hex dumps since these are small files.